let's see if we can get a concussion from corn cobs today. It's like a whole new ball game. So it just, it makes it interesting. Hey, good morning. Welcome back to Ormond Simmentals. Thanks for following along and jumping back on the channel. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and help support the channel. I did notice on the cameras this morning that one of the cows uh, managed to get herself well she's not in with Joey right now just north of the border where she's supposed to be <clears throat> which means she's up top somewhere which means they opened one of the gates and they do we do close them we do close the locks um, but they do open them they keep rubbing their noses on them and here's 50 You're not supposed to be there, young lady. You're not supposed to be there. You know better. Okay, at least it doesn't look like she caused too much damage. Most of the time they just knock stuff down and, oh, well, of course they crap all over the place, but they know they're not supposed to be in there. And here she comes. See, there she is. She knows she's not supposed to be in there. Right? You gonna come out? Come on. But what these guys will do is, if this is even up just a little bit, they'll actually sit there and they'll rub with their nose and they'll, they'll unlock it and then they'll push it. They'll push it open. Because there, there have been days where they get up top and then dad and I will um, have energetic conversations with each other about who left the gate open. And it is mostly me. I'll, I, I will take ownership that I forget to lock it sometimes. But then we will make sure we lock it. And then the next day they'll be up there again. Some of those, some of those cows are, they're crafty. All right, so I'm gonna try and feed her a little bit, but I am I am kind of liking this little mixer guy here. It uh, it makes doing bottles pretty nice. You can just stick the guy in, ten seconds or so. Good to go. And it's a little dark, but again, this was one of the better bottles you ever make. The bottle you don't have to use. So that's a good sign. I'm gonna dump this out, or at least some of it out, give it to the cats. All right, so we made it over the corn crib and we are going to fill the gravity box. So Bethany is going to hold the two by four, not two by four. She's gonna hold the plywood on that side as a deflector, and then I'll take care of this side. <clears throat> and we should get a lot less um, dive bombing cobs of corn. So that'll be nice. So yeah, let's see if we can get a concussion from corn cobs today. All right, so we got our lunch break in, a little lunch break. Um, but what I'm gonna do, it's so nice outside. It's a little breezy, but it's really nice. I'm not too worried about this calf from yesterday that was in the mud. Uh, but I wanna do is I wanna open, I'm gonna open this all up so that the two older ones can actually come outside. And then we're gonna grind corn. So we're going from, we're going from crib to bin today. 
So, yeah. Hopefully 10 doesn't give me too much grief. I think I'm going to grab my paddle, though, just in case. <clears throat> Everybody's got to figure out who's who. Got to grab our mix and then get that 2940 fired up and get the grinder out. So this is a split auger. We got to put it together. This little cone guy has got to get in here. But we run it before we actually put it together because this time of year, starlings will actually crawl in here and they'll start making nests. And to try and drive that nest past this joint, we break shear pins. If there's one in this area, it'll go and it'll come out. But it kind of becomes a pain but we just, we always want to run it a little bit to make sure there's no junk in there. Alright, let's grind this stuff up. Bethany is going to be playing the role of dad today and she gets to be flow control. Isn't that right? She's even wearing ear protection. That's amazing. And she knows sign language too. So now we gotta throw our bins full, so we gotta throw in unload mode. All right, so this guy goes all the way up front, like that. You gotta pull that pin out. It's on a spring, you just rotate it, and then it's disengaged. If that's in, then this flywheel is going, and you're driving the hammers. With a disengaged, the hammers are not engaged. The calves and the cows in the yard are getting a big treat. My nieces are here and they're giving them range cubes. So, making friends. They're having a good time. They wanted to play with the cats, but as uh, one of them said, they're not a cat whisperer. And the girls helped me out. They gave them a little ground feed. These guys are happy. And unload number two. And I only gave them half, or I had the girls give them half uh, of their nightly feeding. They did get a little ground feed this morning. There was a little bit in the bin because I was tapping around on it. had a little bit of a slide. But uh, yeah, so they gave them half, half of it. And then when we get everything put away and I feed in about an hour, then um, I'll give them the rest of their stuff later. And that 10 calf, the one that was in the mud yesterday, she was in the back I let all these guys out so that the calves could run around and play outside because that's honestly the best thing for them um, yeah that little stinker got up and she's back there sucking so and just like that we're basically done Bethany did a nice job on flow control Only 
a couple left. So I'm gonna kind of start working on feeding just really slow. It's about three o'clock and that's tip, our typical feeding time is three, 3.30. And for anybody who has seen it in the background, this old chopper box, it's a load master. Um, this is, a, if you hook the PTO up, yes, it'll move. Uh, but everything wood on here would need to be replaced if we wanted to actually use this thing. It, it does have a really good running gear underneath it. That's probably the only reason it's still sitting here. Or when uh, we do corn silage this fall, the pile's going right where this thing is, so it's going to have to disappear. So it's probably going to, well, honestly, the roof on it's not bad. You know. loafing shed have been without some form of salt for just a tickle longer than I thought because it's like a freaking battle royal back there I threw like a regular red trace block in there and then I had gotten um, a bag of loose selenium so threw just those in there and hopefully Joey who's just to the right of the camera hopefully she leaves you alone you hear that Joey leave the camera alone okay I didn't see a pinky swear. No. These guys are doing pretty good. Uh, this Bravo Bull is actually, I mean, he's obviously a little smaller, but he is. He is starting to thicken up nicely. Uh, he does still have skurs. You know, if you pause and you look, he does have little skurs. But I'm wiggling them. Uh, this guy, we're wondering, he's got a lot of hair. He definitely has more hair than the other guys do. Uh, so we're wondering how long it's gonna take for him to slick off. Because he definitely has more hair. But everybody's doing really, really well. Like I said, that Bravo's actually starting to he's starting to thicken up nice. He's he's doing decent. Um, and then these Gomers sit there and they fight over a stall. There's plenty of space. I mean, I more than enough space here. There we go. There we go. You guys figured it out. But again, skurs skurs are not horns. If he had horns. Um, they would be as big or bigger than uh, uh, the 53 red calf horny. Um, hers are solid. Uh, when you grab a horn, you you know it's a horn because it, it is solid. It's you're not you're not budging that thing. Uh, if it's moving, you're moving the head. Uh, skurs skurs are literally just like your finger. I mean, I, I'm wiggling it like this when I grab onto it. It's it's more just like a fingernail. It's not it's not an actual horn. He is tested hetero pulled. Does he carry the horn gene? Yes. But he is pulled. He is skur pulled. Um, does that mean he's gonna throw skurs? No. Could anybody could any hetero pulled bull throw skurs? Yes. I'm not 100% sure if a homopold bull can still throw skurs. I think they can. I'm, I would, I would guess that they can. Now, homopold on homopold, I'm guessing that skurs would be a non-issue. 
Now, color-wise, as far as jeans go, that's like a totally different animal. I mean, black is obviously a dominant color over red, but then you throw in that whole Charlay sidebar kind of thing, and it just gets interesting. Um, I am a fan, and I do watch Farmer Tyler Ranch, um, and I think, I think I'm sure a bunch of you guys do too. Um, but I like his channel, and he's got that. He's starting to get calves from that rivet bull that he has. That's that's you know that grayish cream. You know, obviously comes from the Charlay, and and I've seen and, and read over the years that for whatever reason that that cream or that Charlay, I think I think if it's if the cow even has a recessive gene in there somewhere that it'll throw that cream color even even on a heavy black angus um animal and i i, I could be totally wrong um but i know he's he's mentioned a couple times about you know rivet bean having a lot of uh black angus in them but i think because the fact that he is actually that cream or gray color uh that's where he's getting all the cream calves and they look great i mean it's it's funny because it's like you can you can spot them and it's like yep i know who your daddy is you know so i, I think that's kind of cool but that's what i've heard and seen at least when i'm reading and stuff like that about the whole uh little bit of charlotte influence um, but i'm sure he's he's probably seen seen comments or getting comments on that why he's getting so much of the charlotte uh look but they're definitely nice looking calves so <clears throat> yeah so the color thing is a whole totally different thing um basically between reds and blacks black is dominant and then you, know, you throw in that charlie thing and it you get that cream color and it's like a whole new ball game so it just it makes it interesting sunday morning i'm getting going here well i got photo in with the calves so now i'm gonna see if i can lure her around and get her in i got these guys locked up in the barn so hopefully photo comes she should be like one of the easier ones to grab because i might be able to lure her with another bucket all right so this afternoon we're going to apparently drive that uh, 2030 over to where it's going to get worked on um, it's only like three miles, give or take, but it is windy out here. So I'll be honest, I didn't take you along for taking that tractor up there. It is so windy out here. It's like 30 mile an hour, 40 mile an hour gusts. Kind of sucks. But I do want to uh, process that heifer calf from the other day. Uh, she is going to be FM10 because she's from CF10. Her letter is M, and we're still with the 10 family. Okay, 99. And yes, we're gonna hoof taper. We did not have internet. <laughs> Alright, not too shabby. She was 98 pounds on the scale, 94 on the tape. So a pretty good correlation there. Um, and just for reference, she had a monster steer calf last year, well, bull calf, and he was, hold please, her bull calf last year was 109 pounds. So there's that. He's a monster, by the way. Yeah, he's big. Um, so big calves out of her, actually interesting enough. Let's do a little history. In the lights, you guys can see me. Not that you want to actually see me. Um, so last year, 109 pounds. 
What was 2022? Now, 2022 would have been a different bowl, so two calves out of Bruno, you know, in that upper 90s. And granted, she is a maturing cow, too. Like, what is she, six years old? So she's, she's probably right in her prime. Now, our, our last bull, um, Didge, actually tended to throw a little bit smaller calves um, than our normal. And when I, when I talk about Bruno not really changing weights, I'm talking about like across the board, like across the spectrum of years, yearly averages. Um, she had, it's in the abyss of numbers. There it is. She had an 85 pound bull calf. 21, what's she having 21? She's only getting younger. Uh, 21, her calf passed away. I think it was born, I think it might have been born dead. That was kind of my, just looking at my notes. Um, that was 21, so 22. Well, in 2022, she had her first calf. That was her first calf, so I'm not exactly sure who. It probably wasn't, I'm guessing it was an eagle. Um, was 73 pounds. And now I'm curious, so I'm gonna look them up in the herd book. I'm guessing it might have been, eh, that might have been all around time. That might have been a time when we had all arounds. Um, I'm guessing it's either an eagle or an all around. Yes, all around. That was an all around song. And again, from our past experience, at least from our females, I have not been overly excited with all around females. But the bulls were nice. The bulls were definitely nice. But um, the, the females, I wasn't too crazy about them yet. I don't know why you're so pissy. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just letting her sniff me. I'm not, I'm not really teasing her. I'm just letting her sniff me. So, all right. So we're gonna roll out this bale, and then we got a little bit of water to run, and then we're gonna call it a day. And honestly, get out of this wind. So, yeah. All right, we're gonna call this the end of the day, the end of the weekend, and the end of the video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you got any suggestions on videos or anything like that, anything you want me to go into on detail, uh, please leave those in the comments as well. Hope you liked the video. Please comment, like, subscribe, and if you'd like to, also hit that share button, share our content, help support that channel even a little bit more, but make sure you hit that subscribe button. And thanks for coming along.